I come from like the world of games. So when I used to work at Marvel, specifically, you're not sharing your code with you know people of the internet to help you. You know, you share something, someone else uses it, or they improve upon it, or they make, and then next thing you know, we're on Mars. So, <laughs> I mean, like that's, but really, that's kind of how it goes. Thank you so much for joining me, Amy Double D, here in Hybrid World Adelaide for the next episode of Be The Drop. Yay. And you've got your item of significance, which looks amazing. So if you could explain that and tell us what it is and how it connects you with your community. Yeah, okay, so I came here for mod. I taught six workshops. Each of them, one was like electronics, one was learn to solder, one was robotics, some were like mold casting with LEDs. and. Um, the idea was sometimes when you do electronics and things like that, it doesn't apply to kids or they don't understand the context or the purpose. So I kind of like to apply it to stuff I like. So each of the workshops, they learn something new. And then after I felt they had mastered it, I'm like, now you're going to contribute to an actual piece of the costume. So all of the workshops actually um, help contribute to this sword, which has some resin cast in it, some laser cut, 3D printing. It's pretty neat to see like the community of like people and like the open source of sharing and that fear of people don't know what they're doing and um, kind of come together to help create like one awesome thing. It's pretty neat. It is, it's amazing. So you have a background with making things and yeah. also as an engineer. Yes. So perhaps tell us a little bit about how you got started on this journey. I come from like the world of games. So when I used to work at Marvel, specifically the Hulk is green. You're not gonna be changing the greed, but you're also not sharing your code. You're not sharing your schematic because they were intellectual property. Not to say that journey was like not amazing, but yeah, I think that's where it came from. It's the sharing, being able to share. And um, a lot of the stuff for code, especially for if you work for a corporate or anything like that, you're not, you're not sharing your code with you know, people of the internet to help you. No, so this is a real good, you know, way that you can incorporate other people and their Yeah, and that. ask for help and then like, you know, you share something, someone else uses it or they improve upon it or they make and then next thing you know, we're on Mars. So, <laughs> I mean, like that's, but really that's kind of how it goes. I listened to some of your content on your website and you said something like that you wanted to be able to, you know, get your own way out of the castle. Yeah. You didn't want to have to wait to be rescued. Yeah, my dad you know. used to be like, why are you taking apart your new stuff? <laughs> but um, my education is a little different, so I was homeschooled. I never understood like why I had to play with that or do that, and um, watched Star Trek a lot with my dad and um, as a kid. And when I think Voyager came out, which was one of the shows, like there was a, a female captain, and I don't know. I just remember. I don't know. It's just a very different world to think about, and um, that was a big thing for like you know, starting up like this scholarship because there's some girls that are like, hey, I wanna like go into computer science or I wanna make games or something and my parents don't quite understand what it is. So I'm like, if I can just give back or you can help your parents understand what it is or anybody, cause I don't know, back to like the people, right? I guess, so yeah, and communication. So we, we are here at Hybrid World Adelaide, which is looking at this fusion and collision of, you know, technology and digital entertainment and the real and seeing what evolves from that. You know, what, what do you see this space? What's there? Hmm. So actually what's really neat, like besides like the amazing stuff for technology is the hands-on, right? So if you've ever been to like a museum as a kid, they're like, it's just like once you're eating, I, I remember I'm like, like, don't touch this. You're like, mom, this is so boring but they're trying to do like the hands-on for this and not like they have like coding stuff downstairs. I'm like, this is awesome. So all the kids are interested. The parents are interested. I think they see the value of like kind of where technology is going. And um, some people are afraid of technology and uh, like I have an RFID implant in my hand and some people are, you know, I don't know. There's been interesting conversations about that, but that's a hybrid world has done a really good job with the hands-on and also making it fun because it's not like, oh, look at this stuff and then now you can't touch anything. 
Yeah. Yeah. So I am intrigued about the RFID chip because I was just thinking, I've got to ask. So um, what is it? What does it do? Like, where do you see that technology going? I mean, obviously RFID chips are are widely used, but right, not, right. It's not, not so a, much in people's bodies. Yes, yeah, so it's not a new, it's not a new technology. <laughs> no. And like, uh, if you chip your pets, like it's kind of the same technology as that. Um, it's tiny. It's like the size of the grain of rice. It's right there. You can try to feel it. Like where? In there? I don't know if I can. Yeah. So. Oh, right. oh yeah. So barely. It's really tiny, but. Um, no, it's not connected to the internet. You can't track me. I'm like, if you want to know where I am, you can just like look on Twitter or something. Like, I feel like that's probably a better way to get a hold of me. But this, if you could store like your medical information or things like that, yeah, access. Do you, do you see that in the future that we'll all just really have a chip in us and so much of it will be done via this chip? I mean, yeah. I think of it this way, like, do you wear glasses or contacts? You already have some type of like upgrade that's helping you see. I'm like, all right, congratulations, you're a body hacker because you have something that you're using that you were not born with and you need and you're using to help improve your life. So yeah, yeah, it's just an evolution of it. Yeah. And I think that's what you know these sort of conferences are all about, like having a look. What is that evolution? Yeah, the, the, the education, kind of talking about you know what it is and then like how it can be applied. So like my friend that actually has medical use for it of how he could collect data and you know, help save like his life is very, mm. it's very intriguing where that could go. Yeah. And I get that some people are afraid of where that goes, yeah, but that's think, part of the conversation. Yeah. That's part of the conversation and part of like the education of what it is. And so you're also involved in games and developing games. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about that? Hmm. I love how you're fat. You look excited about that. Yeah. But that's also part of the thing of like not being able to talk about stuff as far <laughs> as, um, I always like playing games and I remember we play, I used to play this like I like text adventure games. Do you ever read books where it's like choose your own adventure? Yeah. Okay, so there's this text game I used to play and it was, uh, it's called Zork. And literally it's like, uh, you, you load the game and it's like in a little terminal and it's just text and it says, hey, you've, you know, you come upon this white house and it just tells you. And so you have to type in, go left, right, whatever, and then make this decision. There's no GUI, no graphical interface, no player. And I was like, oh, this is amazing. And I was like, oh, I wanna make games. I told my dad, I'm like, all right, I'm going to change my major. I'm going to make games. He's like, oh, that's cute. Like, you're going to find a real job, right? And then I'm like, yeah. So I changed my major. I had applied. I didn't get um, the job at, like, when I did an internship at Marvel the first time. I got it the second time. And um, I don't know if my dad quite understood exactly what I was doing, but he was very supportive. And when I worked on um, the Thor game and the Captain America game, we actually stayed and so you can see my name in the credits and he was like, he was super proud. So it was uh, like a little like tear moment and yeah. it's pretty neat too. So, so I mean, and about that, like making a living out of your passion and what were some of the biggest challenges along the way? I struggled a lot with like, like in programming, like debugging stuff. And I think probably a lot of engineers do that too. And it's, I think that's probably like the cosplay and the electronics come into play. It's like stepping back and looking at it step by step because, um, so like one of the workshops I taught was uh, electronic stuff and they had to do LEDs, battery and all this. And so the kids would be like, it's not working. Okay, I'm like, all right, no, no, no. You can't say, it's like calling IT and you're like, no, it's not working. And you're like, that's an excellent description. So what's not working? So it's that thought process. It's like, all right, your LED is getting power. So you know that you're getting power, you know your LED works. The problem is in between. So I think that's where the electronics and the cosplay, it's having a physical item in your hand to be able to step through. And so I think that's helped with like the debugging process because now there's all these like fancy tools for your debugging and things like that, but it's stepping through step by step if something's not working and making yourself slow down. And so along the way, what what do you think has been the thing that's really helped you? I love it, listening downstairs. What do you think has been the biggest thing oh wait, been, that's really helped you grow your community around you? Asking questions. Yep. yep. And like, I think there's like some embarrassment in some way of like asking questions, but it's like, why, why, why? But also be able to explain like why you did something. That's that like debugging process. Because like when I was trying to walk them through like this little uh, rocket for the PCB, they're like, it's not working. I'm like, okay, well, why? Like step through that process of you're like, all right, well, I have power, the LED's working. So like, 
why. Ask, ask me questions, but be able to explain like your process. Mm -hmm. So I was at um, a conference uh, a few weeks ago and went to like we had a dinner and there was uh, this group. They go into like jails and they help like girls uh, learn how to code but they can't have the internet in jails. So they're teaching these girls, and these girls are learning to program and code everything without the use of the internet. I'm like, wow. holy, like, j so they, you know, they really have to understand everything that they're doing, and it has to work. Mm. They would be understanding the process very yes, well. Yes, that's exactly, that's exactly <laughs> what I was trying to get at. They have to understand exactly what they're doing for it to work, because you don't have, you know, you don't have, you can't Google it. So they're just like, all right, it doesn't work, you have to go through and you have to understand exactly what you're doing, why it doesn't work, and how you can fix it. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you.